The British artist Ryan Gander is very unpin downable. He works in all kinds of media, from writing to sculpting to making paintings that no one sees to conglomerations of all kinds of materials and images. I don't know if he'd thank me for saying it, but I think he's a kind of trickster. And his art is enigmatic. It leads you up the garden path. It leads your mind in directions that you didn't know it was going to go in. This sculpture looks like it's been carved from marble, a most marvellous bit of drapery carving there, is in fact a cast. And it's a cast of his daughter's attempt to make a den at home. There's a tin of paint there. There's all kinds of objects which his daughter has used to make this kind of secret little den for herself. And if you like, it's a homage to her creativity, as well as the fact that Ryan has noticed it. And noticing things, I think, is at the core of what he does. He's alert to the possibilities that the everyday somehow manages to bring forth. Ryan, thank you very much for taking time out from installing this show, which isn't, isn't even all up yet. We have nearby what looks like a very realistic chest of drawers, except that's also carved. Don't tell me that it's been cast. Nice wood. It's, it's wood. Carved. And there's a, a carved used condom on top of it. This work's called The Way Things Collide, and it's about, quite literally, collisions between objects, things that you'd never associate as being put together. When you approach it from the door, you can see it just looks like a normal USM cabinet. And then to take something totally out of context and forge these two things together just by producing them from one material. A lot of your works seem to have secrets. I mean, I, I'm thinking particularly about locked room scenario. I have a bit of a problem with the idea of the word secret, because if it's a secret, it's suggesting that there's something that's undisclosed on purpose. Oh, sure. So the things that I'm doing are more like starting points or catalysts for other yeah. people's thinking, you know? Do you think people get the humour of what you do? I don't know. I'd have to perform a survey to find out, I guess. I mean, it's not one of my objectives to be humorous, but I just think the, well, the world's humorous, isn't it? Wherever you look, there's amazing things, funny things, if your eyes are open. Mm. And absurd things. I mean, everything's absurd, really, isn't it? We pay extra special attention and all our senses are acutely on edge in here because we're in this context and we know that these white walls signify that we should be aware of what's going on around us. But there's more brilliant stuff out there than there is in here. It's just that we're not acutely aware of it when we walk outside. Can I ask you, is that the watch? Yeah. Is it an artwork? It is an artwork. It's called Time Is Money, My Friend, 2011. I understand a collector wanted to swap his watch for an artwork. No, the, the collector wanted to buy an artwork. And it was physically quite a big artwork. Big artworks that are unsold mean you've spent money on them and you're going to continue spending money on storing them. It was my opening in Tokyo and I was, I'd had a couple of glasses of vino. And so I was feeling a bit cheeky and I said, if you give me a watch, you can have it. And he gave me his watch. First of all, I'd never buy a watch this expensive because I'd feel too guilty. What is it, a Rolex or something? It's a Bamford Rolex, which they only make 25 of them. It's a good illustration of how artworks function in my mind because it's basically the watch in itself as an object isn't the significant thing. It's the story of the trade and the relationship between me and Katayama, this collector and interior designer. And although I have the watch on my wrist, he still has it as an artwork because perhaps now he's sitting down in Tokyo with someone for dinner, telling them the same story. It all fits quite neatly, the idea that there's time, money, friendship, carrier of a story, and that art's value is, uh, it, it retains its value in a monetary sense, but also in a sense of worth and value. Exactly. And meaning, yeah. not just cost. Living is a creative act and the way that you put things on your mantelpiece or the clothes that we wear or any number of decisions we make of how to brush a room. We all, we'd all do it differently. That creativity is, I mean, embedded in just living. These things aren't the creativity, they're the fallout of that process of living, you know. You, you produce a lot. 
Last year we made about, say, 200, 300. Two or 300 works. It's because I almost have several practices, you know. If I just made sculptures, if I was a sculptor, then I'd only have a fifth of the amount of work that I have because I write scripts and radio plays and make clothes and jewellery and, you know, it's endless, isn't it? it? Yeah. You're a kind of filter. I mean, the artist is a kind of a filter and um, yeah. someone who magnifies certain aspects of... It's like having a highlighter pen, isn't it? And just picking bits out sometimes. But it's almost just being interested in the world more than creativity. It's more like enjoying keeping your eyes open, your wits about you.